Roger Baker. He's a senior vice president of strategic analysis at the intelligence firm Stratford, and he joins me from Austin, Texas. Roger, let me begin with what we learned from the White House, basically saying these talks with the DPRK moving more quickly than expected, and President Trump uh, will leave Singapore uh, sooner. What do you make of that? Is that good news or bad news? Well, I mean, the, the White House and I think the North Koreans are both trying to signify that this is good news, that there is some sort of agreement or deal that they can reach, some statement that's going to follow on in the Pan Munjom Declaration. Um, but the speed of it suggests also that uh, we're not going to necessarily see the, the peace accord signed at this time. Um, it may be that they're preparing to uh, create a space for a reciprocal summit uh, either in Pyongyang or in Washington, D.C. for one of those bigger and bolder moves. Before I get to the nuts and bolts of really what's at stake here and, and what the two sides are going to talk about, uh, President Trump told reporters last week that he will know within the first minute of meeting Kim whether he's serious about the nuclear negotiations. But shouldn't that be established before you agree to a high-stakes summit? I really think that we've got to be careful taking some of those types of rhetoric from this president. He likes to make those types of statements. It's how he deals with negotiations. It's how he tries to shape expectations. I think the work that Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has been doing uh, very clearly understands what the North Koreans are and aren't willing to do going into this dialogue. And, and despite the way that that statement out of the president may seem, this administration does know what the North Koreans are willing and not willing to do. And Pompeo has said the U.S. is willing to offer unique security assurances in return for a verifiable, irreversible denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. What does unique security assurances mean exactly? Big question mark what that would mean. Um, clearly, the, the North Koreans want the United States to affirm that they're not going to attack or invade. The North Koreans are going to want to change in U.S. force structure uh, in and around the Korean Peninsula. Uh, and that would be a big change for the United States if they did that in relationship to this summit. Um, and so we're not entirely sure what that piece means. Uh, I think we're just uh, waiting to hear what the U.S. says on that. I think another big question is, is it really realistic to think that Kim will suddenly give up all his nuclear weapons, which is such a big part of its national identity and security and something he and his family have spent decades developing? I mean, are they just going to say, fine, well, we're going to give all that up? I don't think that there's any expectation that they're just going to walk out of this meeting and then in the next two weeks, North Korea's nuclear weapons disappear and everybody's happy. Uh, certainly, even from a logistical standpoint, this is going to take a long time. But remember that the purpose of the development of the nuclear weapons in North Korea was not the possession of the weapons themselves. It was to change the fundamental position of North Korea in its relation with South Korea, in its relation with the United States, and in its relation with the world. And it seems to be at least moving in that direction to gaining traction. And how would you, Roger, define a successful summit? Will U.S. get any firm commitments at least? And what's going to happen if that doesn't happen? I think that we would define a successful summit uh, as a summit that comes out with uh, a clear set of next steps, uh, the North Koreans uh, being willing to disclose what they have, uh, some establishment of mechanisms to go in and monitor and verify the North Korean equipment even before we move towards denuclearization, and an agreement of a move towards the establishment of liaison offices and maybe move towards diplomatic relations. That's going to be a successful summit. If the summit completely falls apart, the risk is uh, that the United States determines that negotiations are no longer possible to disarm North Korea. But at the same time that the U.S. would make that assertion, uh, the efforts by North Korea have really reduced the ability of the United States to gain full international support for a, a complete embargo on North Korea and certainly for military action on North Korea. All right. We'll leave it there. Roger Baker, thank you.